Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 7th of August. Indian Prime Minister Modi says new education policy is foundation of new India. Rajapaksa brothers win by landslide in Sri Lanka's election. And Afghan president addresses Loya Jirga calls for decision on Taliban prisoners. And now for all the details. Addressing a conclave on transformational reforms in higher education under national education policy, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday said the new national education policy will be the foundation of the new India. Modi said that through this new education policy, India will transform its students into global citizens who are rooted in their values. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday delivered the inaugural address at the Conclave on Transformational Reforms in Higher Education under National Education Policy through video conferencing. Modi said the National Education Policy 2020 would usher a new world order while disputing any bias in the formulation of the scheme. National Education Policy was approved by the Indian Cabinet on July 29. The new education policy outlines some major changes in the school and higher education system. और हमारे युवाओं को जिस तरह की एजुकेशन की जरूरत है जैसी स्किल्स चाहिए राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति पर इन बातों पर विशेष फोकस है वन ऑफ द मेजर चेंजेस इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी इज द शिफ्ट फ्रॉम टेन प्लस टू फ्रेमवर्क ऑफ एजुकेशन टू फाइव प्लस थ्री प्लस थ्री प्लस फोर ईयर्स विद स्ट्रॉन्ग बेस ऑन अर्ली चाइल्ड केयर एंड एजुकेशन फ्रॉम एज थ्री some of the biggest highlights are a single regulator for higher education institutions, multiple entry and exit options in degree courses, low stakes board exams and common entrance exams for universities. At least nine people lost their lives and several were feared trapped under debris in Iduki district of India's southern Kerala state on Friday after torrential rains triggered a massive landslide in the area. The incident came as several states in South India, including Tamil Nadu and Karnataka, have been experiencing heavy rains, landslides and floods from past few days, bringing normal life to a halt. At least nine people lost their lives and several were feared to be trapped after a major landslide hit Petimudi in Kerala's Iduki district on Friday. The landslide happened in the Rajamalai district of Kerala, which is around 16 miles from the town of Munnar. Kerala Chief Minister Pinarai Vijayan, taking to Twitter, said a 50-member strong special task force team of the fire force has been dispatched for rescue efforts and have been equipped for nighttime rescue activities. This came as the Indian Meteorological Department has declared a red alert for extremely heavy rainfall in Iduki, Malapuram and Vaina districts for the coming days, an orange alert in five other districts of Kerala. Several other states in South India including Tamil Nadu and Karnataka are also witnessing heavy rains, landslides and floods bringing normal life to a halt. India's Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar and U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on Thursday discussed the security situation in the Indo-Pacific region. The two leaders reiterated their commitment to fighting COVID-19 and cooperation towards the advancement of peace in Afghanistan. 
India's Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar and U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on Thursday discussed the relationship between U.S. and India to advance peace, prosperity and security in the Indo-Pacific. Taking to Twitter, Jay Shankar on Friday said both leaders reviewed bilateral cooperation, shared assessments on regional and global issues including South Asia, Afghanistan, Indo-Pacific, coronavirus challenge and quad format in the near future. Pompeo had recently said that US, Australia, India and Japan had reinvigorated the quad grouping. Meanwhile, reiterating India-US relationship, Pompeo said, we remain united to advance peace in Afghanistan and to secure a sovereign Indo-Pacific in which all countries can prosper. India-US relationship has assumed a new dimension in the aftermath of the Galwan crisis in India's Ladakh region, as well as in light of the global fight against coronavirus. While several countries, including India, remain affected with Chinese expansionism, Pompeo has on several platforms stressed that China's expansionism is the biggest challenge of the present times. Pompeo has been urging countries to push back against China, whose Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, he said, rather than helping world during the COVID crisis, is bullying its neighbors and militarizing features in the South China Sea. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's strongman Mahinda Rajapaksa staged a political comeback on Friday as his party, Sri Lanka, Podujana, Peramuna and its allies registered a landslide victory in the twice-postponed general elections. This gives Mahinda and his younger brother, President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, the power to enact sweeping changes to the constitution of the island nation. Sri Lanka President Gotapaya Rajapaksa's party, Sri Lanka Botujana Peramuna, or SLPP, has swept the parliamentary elections held Wednesday to elect 196 members to the 225 member parliament, giving him the power to enact sweeping changes to the constitution. Mahinda Rajapaksa is most likely to be sworn in the same position as Sri Lanka's Prime Minister by his younger brother, President Gotapaya Rajapaksa. Sajid Premadasa Samagi Jana Balawegaya, the breakaway party from the United National Party, came second, obtaining just 54 seats. Supporters could be seen celebrating at the office of Madura Witane, an elected parliamentarian of the SLPP. <laughs> Umatuing, Udanguin, Nona, Janavara Magnemi, May Janavara Sambur, Labadune, Ape, Janajatuma, Genian, May Rate, Vadapili Velagana, May Rate Janata Kurbu, Viswas theatre. Tunindega Labimi, Ape, Pradhan Arumana, Patajati, Vadagar, the Rajan Ike, Capitan Biladiron, the Rajan Ike, we to save it, Avala Brutino, same. Several world leaders, including Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, congratulated Mahinda Rajapaksa on his victory on Thursday. Rajapaksa brothers are best known for crushing the Tamil Tiger rebels fighting for a separate homeland during the island nation's 30-year-long civil war. Gotapaya had sought a two-thirds majority in parliament to be able to restore full executive powers to the presidency, which he says are necessary to implement his agenda to make the country economically and militarily secure. Moving on. Engineers in Gilgit, Baltistan recently held a press conference raising the issue of poor telecom services in the illegally occupied region. They demanded nationalization of ESCOM, the local telecom service provider, to improve its efficiency, which could also provide job opportunities for local youth. As people in illegally occupied Gilgit Baltistan continue to experience poor telecom services, local engineers have demanded nationalization of ESCOM, the local telecom service provider, to improve its efficiency. During a press conference held over the issue of poor telecom services and internet connectivity across Gilgit Baltistan, the engineer said nationalization of ESCOM will enable local authorities to work independently on the betterment of ESCOM and take necessary decisions in this regard without federal government's interference. 
They asserted that the nationalization of ESCOM can also increase employment opportunities for youth in the region. हम तलब ये कर रहे हैं कि ESCOM को nationalize किया जाए. Nationalize करने से दो तीन फायदे हैं. एक तो जो हमारे सर सर्विस है. जिस तरह पाकिस्तान के आप दूसरे हिस्सों में देखते हैं कि ES वो टेनर है, जोंग है, उनके फौज किस तरह चलते चलते हैं. आप बिल्कुल उनके इन उनकी आप बॉर्डरी क्रॉस करके आप गिरदिक बल्लेबाज़ में आते हैं तो ठप से वो केबीज़ नीचे आ जाती हैं तो इससे इससे अंदाज़ा लगाएं कि ये लोग इस कैलिबर के नहीं हैं कि ये लोग ही इस फोर जी को बेहतर से बेहतर सहूलत करें जब इसको नेशनलाइज करेंगे तो एक तो ये होगा कि यहाँ की जो आवाम है यहाँ के जो बेरोजगार नौजवान हैं इनको इस पर नौकरियाँ मिल जाएंगी एसकॉम इज दर्स्ट टेलीकॉम नेटवर्क प्रोवाइडर विच फोकस इज ऑन प्रोवाइडिंग टू जी थ्री जी एंड फोर जी सर्विस इन पार्ट ऑफ गिलगित बल्तिसान एंड पाकिस्तान एडमिनिस्ट्रेड कश्मीर इन बोथ द पब्लिक एंड प्राइवेट सेक्टर Students in Gilgit Baltistan have also been raising concern over unstable internet signals amid the COVID-19 pandemic as they now need it more to continue their online classes. The Grand Assembly Loya Jirga has opened in Afghanistan's capital to decide whether to release a final 400 Taliban prisoners. President Ashraf Ghani in his inauguration speech on Friday reiterated that neither he nor the country has the legal authority to decide on their future. This is the last hurdle to opening peace talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban under a peace deal between the militant group and the United States. Thousands of Afghan elders, community leaders and politicians gathered on Friday to debate whether the government should release 400 hardcore Taliban prisoners, a move that would likely quickly clear the path for peace talks. People have been invited to the Grand Assembly known as the Loya Jirga in Kabul amid tight security and the coronavirus pandemic to debate for at least 3 days and then advise the government on whether the prisoners should be freed. The Loya Jirga is being led by Abdullah Abdullah, the head of the High Council for National Reconciliation. President Ashraf Ghani addressed the meeting as it opened saying that the Taliban had said once the 400 prisoners were released they would start negotiations within 3 days and commit to a ceasefire As part of a February pact between the United States and the Taliban allowing for the withdrawal of US troops it was agreed that some 5000 Taliban prisoners should be released from Afghan jails as a condition for talks between the militants and the US backed government The government has released all but some 400 militants it says have been involved in some of the worst crimes. Washington has been urgently trying to ease the deadlock over prisoners as it withdraws troops and President Donald Trump seeks to fulfill a major campaign promise to end the war in Afghanistan. Young girls in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir are playing a vital role in preserving their traditional and world famous Kani shawls by getting trained in the art and availing easy loans under government's mudra scheme. Kani shawls are a piece of fabric worn by women over the shoulders. They are one of the oldest handicraft of the valley, woven from pashmina yarns. Young girls in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir are playing a vital role in preserving the traditional and world famous Kani shawls. by getting trained in the art and availing easy loans under the government's mudra scheme kani shawls which is a piece of fabric worn by women over the shoulders are originated from kani hama area of kashmir it is one of the oldest handicraft of kashmir woven from pashmina yarn only trained craftsmen are knowledgeable enough to weave kani shawls the right way early the techniques and knowledge used to transfer from forefathers to next generations but now in order to promote the golden art government through training centers is trying to indulge more and more youth into it hamara kanishal center sir yahan chal raha hai isme 15 trainees hai hamara aur sir instructor ek hai aur liye ke sir eastern craft teacher sir hai inko sir 2 saal ke liye ye training di ja rahi hai kanishal ko training karne ke liye is center ki kya zarurat यहाँ सर ये कानीशाल सिखाने के लिए मैं सर अगर हम इनको दो साल की ट्रेनिंग दे रहे हैं फिर तो सर ये बच्ची अगर अपने घर में सीखेगी अगर बैंक तो फाइनेंस को कर देगी ये तो सर अपना रोजगार कमा सकते हैं इससे सब का फायदा होता है हम लड़कियों का भी ज़्यादा फायदा होता है इसमें क्योंकि लड़कियाँ आमतौर पर घर वाले भी लड़कियों को ज़्यादा पढ़ाई नहीं होती है इसलिए कि हम यही करें ताकि हम भी अपने पैरों पर पे खड़ा हो सकें स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर है 
to the Kani shawl, making it illegal to sell shawls made outside of the Kani Hama area as Kani shawls. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.